Welcome back. In this video, I will go through lesson 9.3 on parsing JSON data. The objective is that students will parse in JSON format, formatted data. Very simple, very transparent. So JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And it's a data format that is commonly used for sending information across the internet from a web server to a client. Whether that client, quote unquote client, is your computer or your cell phone, it's asking for information from the internet. It's asking for information from a web server. And um, you can automate this with code in what's called an application or with what's called an application programming interface, which is what we'll see next week, uh, week 10, with Twitter and YouTube's APIs or application programming interface. Um, so those APIs, send back JSON data. So it's important to know how to parse that data, okay? And the format of a JSON object is very similar to a Python dictionary. So if you need to review what a Python dictionary is and how to interact with it and how to pull data out of a um, Python dictionary, then you should review lesson 7.1 where I present dictionaries. Just to remind us, dictionaries have um, items or pairs and each pair or item has a key and a value. And the way you get a value out of a dictionary is ask for its key. Say, hey, what's the value associated with this key? Can I have the value, please? Okay. Let's take a look at a JSON object here. This is just the Wikipedia article on JSON. Let's jump down to their example one here. Let me zoom out a bit so we can see the whole thing at once. Uh, sorry, I'm not trying to make you seasick here. Just trying to show the whole um, JSON object at once. Here we go. Okay, so at the top there, you see we have an opening curly brace right there. Opening curly brace, I'm circling with my cursor. And at the bottom, we have a closing curly brace right in here. And so that'll come into Python as one dictionary. And it will have quite a few items. Here's one item, here's a second item third, fourth, and then fifth. So here on the fifth item, we see that the key is a string like the other keys were, but this time the value associated with address is an actual dictionary itself. So we have this dictionary nested in a larger dictionary, what will become dictionaries in Python, okay? And so that's the flexibility of um, JSON objects is that you can, package up information in kind of complex and deep, deeply nested ways. Okay, so this is different from say um, a CSV file or an Excel table where you only have, you know, rows and columns and every row has one column. Like, you know, there's just exactly the same number of cells per row. That's not the case here. You can have kind of nested dictionaries as values um, sometimes, other times you can have just an integer or a Boolean value or a string, right? Okay, so that's an example um, JSON object there. Here's an, another one. This one's much uh, more deeply nested and more complex. Let's take a look here. So here's the opening uh, curly brace. Here is an item, right? There's the key of the item and here's the value. The value is this big old nested dictionary. I think all the way down to about there. Um, and then we, within that dictionary, we have this item. There's one item, here's a second item. And the value of that second item is a dictionary itself. Again, another nested dictionary. So I don't wanna get to too much detail here, but the point is that you can have all sorts of complex nested structure in a JSON object. Okay. If you'd like to read more, you can read um, more about JSON. I have a link here on my lesson plan to introducing JSON at json.org, they talk about it. Um, there, I also have a link to the Wikipedia article, um, which I showed you, I, I, that first example was from the Wikipedia article here, okay? Um, so anyway, that's what we'll need to learn how to parse because like I said, um, APIs, that is application programming interfaces, which are, this is a preview, again, um, is a way for computer programs to interact with websites and grab data from websites. 
they almost always send back JSON data. So we need, need to know how to parse JSON data. As Twitter's API, YouTube's API, Reddit's API, and even non-social media APIs use JSON. For example, Merriam-Webster's Dictionary Online, there's an API, so you can use Python to go get definitions or uh, synonyms from Merriam-Webster's uh, Dictionary that way. Okay, so that's what JSON is. And the logic to uh, parse um, a JSON file in Python is, is not too hard here. First thing we do is import JSON, lowercase JSON. That's a module in Python. It's a base Python module, which means it comes with Python. You don't have to install it as an extra module. It's already there available. And then there's two ways to do this. You can either, um, there's two ways to do it. You have to know how you're, JSON object is organized or JSON files organized. Okay, because there's a, a dot load function, excuse me, that um, converts a JSON object into a dictionary. And there's a dot load with an S. See that S right there? That is important to notice that. That means string. It takes in as a string a JSON object and then it converts it into a Python uh, dictionary. So there's two files or two functions there. And I'll show you an example of how to use both of these. Okay, but then after that, after you've load or loads, after you've used the function load or loads, uh, depending on how the JSON file is organized, then you have a dictionary in Python. And you can just use the dictionary to get whatever you need out of it. Again, I recommend if you're still uh, not sure exactly how to work with Python dictionaries, to take a look at lesson 7.1, where I talk about Python dictionaries and how to pull data out of a Python dictionary using the appropriate key. Again, Python dictionaries are based on items which have a key and a value pair. That's, that's what item is. Okay. All right, so let's give this a try here. First thing you need to do is download this file. I just have a link to it, it's on the internet right here. It looks like this. Okay, so we see the, the opening curly brace right there. I'm going to zip down to the bottom of the file. We can see the, the corresponding closing curly brace right there. So this will be one dictionary in Python when it comes into Python. And then this dictionary only has one item. The one item's key is clients. It's a string. See that string with quotes. And then the value of this one item begins with a uh, square bracket. Let me zoom in even more. See that square bracket? With my cursor, I'm circling that square bracket. That'll be a list in Python. I'm just gonna zip to the bottom to look at the closing square bracket down here. There it is. It's kind of hard to see, let me zoom in again to, I wanna make you seasick, let me zoom in there. So that's a closing square bracket right there. And so, when we ask for the value associated with the, the key clients, we're gonna get back a list in Python, okay? And then this list has five elements. Here's the first element, what's highlighted in blue. And you can see that those are, that's a curly brace, opening curly brace and a closing curly brace, curly brace. So this will be a dictionary. So there are five dictionaries within this list within the larger dictionary. So again, we have this nested structure of data and we have the age of the person, the name, the gender, other information in here, okay? So we're gonna practice with this file. Just go ahead and download it. You can do that by uh, clicking on the link in the lesson plan and then right-clicking on the screen and saying, save as. I'll just save it to, um, well, I already have it saved on my hard drive, but. I'll just save it right here. I already have it saved there, but you click save, right? Um, or you can do control S, I bet, and that would do the same thing, yeah. So anyway, download it to your hard drive, and then let's work with it here. So here we're going to write a program to print to screen the gender of the clients. Again, let me jump back over to that website. You can see that gender is, is listed right there. We have uh, first the male here, then we have a female here, and then another male, et cetera. Okay, so we wanna pull out, just simply print the screen for the moment, the gender of these clients. 
Okay, the purpose of this is just simply practice how to parse in a JSON object and pull out the data you need from the Python dictionary that is created from that JSON object. Okay. Um, so I would recommend you use the dot load method, dot, the uh, dot load function from the JSON library or um, module. Okay. So give this a try. Again, we're going to do this right here. Write a program to print to screen the gender of the clients. All right. See if you can, you can do that. You have to probably do a little bit of Googling, Python, JSON, load, how to use this type of thing. All right, so take a couple minutes or more to make a good faith effort on trying to do this little practice exercise. Ready, set, go. All right, welcome back. Um, let's take a look at how I approach this, this exercise. <clears throat> Let me pull it over into my script here. Okay, so the first thing you do is import JSON on line two. Then you create a connection out to the JSON file, which is called db.json, right, on your hard drive. You have the full pathway here on line, my line three. I have the pathway to it on, on, uh, on my computer. As some variable name, I like to use in file or fin for file in. And then here on line four, we use the json.load function, no s on load, and we pass in the file handle there the variable name that's holding the file handle. And I save it to a variable called data, whatever you want to save it, whatever, whatever variable you want to be fine there. Now on line five, I jump into a for loop over, they're working on the roof, I don't know if you heard that. Um, I'm looping over the list of clients. So let me jump back over to the website, to the file to look at it. So once I read in with dot loads, I have a dictionary from all the way from here this first opening uh, curly brace all the way down to the bottom. And when I say, hey, what's the value associated with clients? It gives me a list starting with this opening square bracket right there. Okay, so I'm gonna loop over the list and look at each element in turn. By element, I mean the first dictionary. So each element of this list is a dictionary. Okay, that's what we're doing right there. I'm gonna use a variable called client in my for loop. That makes it clear to me that I'm looking at one client at a time in this for loop over the data, right? Going into that list. Now don't get confused on these square brackets. Right here, these square brackets um, are signaling that I'm giving a key to a dictionary and I want the value back out. In other places we've seen square brackets, right? It's, it's used to define a list. And that's exactly what, what's happening over here. These square brackets are defining a list. So, and then within my for loop, the body of my for loop down on six and seven, on the current client, I want the gender of the current client. I just save it to a variable called gender then I print it out right there. So if I run this keyboard shortcut, sure enough, there they are, male, female, male, male, female, down here in my console, okay? So that's how you could um, parse this JSON file and then pull out the gender of each client. It's important, again, I'm probably hammering this, beating a dead horse, so to speak, or whatever other metaphor you wanna use, but you really need to be aware of what type of data you are dealing with. It almost feels like an earthquake, but I know they're working on the, they're working on the roof right above me, um, sorry. You need to be highly aware of what data structure you're working with. So right here, data is a, a dictionary. If I just want to verify that, let me just verify that. Print type data. Let me just rerun the whole script again. There it is. Yeah. See that? Class dict dictionary. And then when I'm looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, then if I say, okay, what's the data type of the key or the value that's associated with the key clients? This should be a list. Rerun the script, keyboard shortcut. Yeah, there it is. See that list right there. So the data is a dictionary. The clients is a list. And then when I jump into this for loop over all the clients, if I were to say, hey, what is the current client's type? This should be a dictionary as well. 
So each of these should be a dictionary. Yep, like all these dictionaries. Anyway, so I'm just really trying to make sure you, you, you're, paying high, you're paying attention, you're highly aware of what the data structure is so you know how to interact with it. If it's a dictionary, you give it a key and you get a value back. If it's a list, you often will loop over lists, right? Like we are here with this list. Okay, so I just wanna be, just make it very clear that you need to be aware of what data structure you're dealing with. And if you need to review what lists are um, or what dictionaries are, again, in 7.1, less than 7.1, we looked at um, dictionaries. So if you'd like to pause the video um, and look at this code right here, there's the entirety of the code that does that work. You can do so now, or you can look at my solution file. Okay, let's take a look at the next exercise. Modify your program to create a frequency dictionary of those genders. All right, with only five, it's somewhat silly to do that, but just for the practice of pulling out data, keeping track of frequencies, let's do that. So how could you modify your program to create a frequency dictionary of those genders that you're pulling out of um, that JSON object. Ready, set, give it a try, pause the video. All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at how I did that. All right, let's take a look at the code before I run it. So again, we're importing JSON, we're opening up a file connection on line three. We're pulling in that data file with the dot load function on the file handle, which I called in file. And then before we jump into the for loop over the clients, we're gonna create an empty dictionary there. And then on line six, we jump into a for loop over the list. And then each, um, each client, right, is a dictionary. So you key into, the value associated with gender there. I just say whichever variable called gender on seven. And then on eight, I use the get dictionary method to update or to populate my dictionary. Um, so what this shows is that it says, okay, here's the, free, here's the dictionary. I want you to get the value associated with this key in that dictionary, which is either male or female, because that's what was um, saved into the variable called gender on seven. And if you don't find the value, return zero. And then whatever value you have, whether it's zero because you haven't seen it yet, or you have a number because you have seen it before, add one to that number and then save it back into its back into that um, key associated with that key back in the, the dictionary. So if we run it, keyboard shortcut, run it. Down here in my console, yep, three males, two females. That's correct. That's what we saw earlier. Okay. So just real quick, this, this is one way of updating the dictionary. Let me just real quick show you that um, we could use an if else, like if, if gender not in frequency.keys, you don't need to put keys because the default thing it looks in when you say, look in this dictionary are the keys, but just to be explicit on what I'm looking for, you could do it that way. I can do freaks gender equals one, because this is the first time I've seen it. Else, which means if I have already seen this gender, I want you to find the gender, count, and add one to it. Again, that plus equal sign is shorthand for this more verbose way of this. Which means find the current value you have, the current count you have for that specific gender that we're looking at right now, whether male or female, add one to it and then save it back into itself, like save it on top of itself. That is just add one to it. Anyway, this is a, a more verbose way of doing what we're doing here with the plus equal sign there. So if I run this again, let me comment out eight for the moment, rerun the whole script and it gives me the same result, right? Male three, female two. Um, so this is kind of a more explicit way, more uh, transparent way on what I'm doing. This is a little quicker. Obviously it's quicker, there's fewer keystrokes, but. So let that's, if you wanna look at this way, uh, this more kind of verbose way, there it is. Or on line eight, line eight does what lines nine through 12 are doing. So if you wanna pause the video now, make it work on your end, you can do so. 
uh, from lines two down to 13 do this exercise. Okay, let's keep rolling. Let's modify our program to calculate the mean age of the clients. How could you do that? We have to use the statistics module and use the mean function, right? We saw that a, a little bit ago with uh, word length of sentences by author like Jane Austen, Mark Twain. So how could you calculate the mean age of the clients? Why don't you give that a try? Would you pause the video now? All right, welcome back. Let's take a look at how I would get the mean ages of the clients. Okay, so we import JSON and statistics. We open up a file connection like we've done before. This is all the same from before. Here is something new. Let me zoom in a bit on that. So that's an empty list right there, square brackets. So I'm creating an empty list. I'm saving to a variable ages with the equal sign, which is an assignment operator to be technical. We loop over the clients, right? This, the data square bracket clients is a list or so looping over it. Each of these clients though is a dictionary. So I need to key into the dictionary and grab the value of age. Then I append it to the ages list that I created on line five, right? Line eight, I append the current age. Then once it's all done uh, on line nine, I just throw the whole list of ages at the mean function in the statistics module. So if I run this keyboard shortcut, I get 31.4. That's about right. I think that's about right. Let's just go take a look real quick. Just kind of eyeball uh, the clients. 36, 24, 30, 38, 29, 31.4. Yeah, that sounds about right to me. Okay. So that's how you could do that if you want to um, pause the video and look at how to get the mean age of the five clients. Just, you can look at the code or look at the solution file. Okay, let's keep cracking. Let's take a look at the next exercise here, which says modify your program to calculate the mean age by gender. That is one mean age for women and another mean age for men. How could you do that? See if you can do that. You're going to need to access the gender of the current client as well as his or her age, and then keep track of the ages by gender, and then get the mean of each of those. Ready, set, give it a try. Welcome back. Let's take a look here on how I approach this problem. Right in here. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay. So let's take a look at the code. <clears throat> this uh, line two, line three, line four are all the same from before. Line five and six, uh, five and six are, are new here. So I have a separate list for the ages for females and a separate list for the ages for males. And then on line seven, I jump into a for loop over the list of clients. And then at the current client, I find his or her age. And then I find his or her gender. And then I jump into a, an if statement on line 10. I say, if the gender is female, then I want you to append to the list called ages underscore female, the current age, the age of the current client, because she is a female. Otherwise, if the gender is not female, we can assume it's male. And then we jump over here to um, ages underscore male and append the current age. Now, obviously I'm, I'm not taking into account non-binary gender. Um, at the moment here. So that's how you could do that. And so you're, you're populating two lists here. And then um, you just throw those lists into the statistics.mean function there. So let me run a keyboard shortcut. And I get back here two statements. The mean age of women is 26.5. And the mean age of men is 34.66666. So the men are slightly older, or on average, eight years older. Now you can see that there's a lot of decimal points here. If we want, we can round this. We can throw this into round. So round, another parentheses right there. And then within this closing parentheses, I'll say one. That is one digit of rounding. Keyboard shortcut to run the script. And now we have 37.7. So it rounded up. 
Okay. If I take a stop, uh, stop the video and look at this, the entirety of the code is between lines two and 15 right there, or you can look at my solution file. Okay, now let's jump over to a different file. Um, download the tweets queried anonymous.json from the CMS. So if you go over to the CMS, let me get to the CMS myself. Um, get in here. And I go to modules, jump down to week 10. And here, nope, week nine, sorry. And here under files, I have tweets queried anonymous JSON. That right there. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna download it up here. It says download tweets queried anonymous.json. Um, I've already done this into my link 360 folder, so I'm not gonna save it, but you would save it, right? Okay, so let's take a look at what that looks like. This is that file, query uh, tweets queried anonymous.json. So what I did is I queried Twitter's API, which I'll show you next week. Um, and I got 100 tweets with uh, COVID that were in English and that were not retweets. And each tweet, as you can see here, is its own line. So on my text editor, it says one here, because this right here is one line. What I mean by that is there's one hard return. It's more than one visual line, right? I'm talking about hard returns though when I say lines. So here's one tweet, here's the other tweet. Um, here's a third tweet, et cetera. So each tweet is on its own line. Okay. Um, so you can see what it says. So unexpected resurgence of COVID-19 in highly vaccinated Chile. And I anonymized these tweets. So I actually, I purposely took out the author uh, ID and changed usernames to just the generic at username um, to anonymize these tweets. It's kind of a courtesy I did for these, these people. Um, Anyway, so what I'm trying to point here, point out here is that this file is a JSON file as well, but it's organized differently. Instead of there being one big dictionary with all the information in one dictionary, it's actually each dictionary is, is on its own line. So we have to deal with this differently. So we can't use the dot load function for this. And so um, here I say print to the console the text of each tweet. Just start out simple here. Print to the console the text of each tweet. Here's my hint. The dot load function won't work with this file because the tweets are each on their own line. Instead, you should loop over the file line by line and use the loads with an S function um, to read in the tweet uh, and bring it as a dictionary, as its own little dictionary, work with it, pull out the text, bring it to the console, and then move on to the next tweet in the for loop. Okay, so give that a try. Give that a good faith effort. You may have to do some Googling like Python, um, you know, JSON loads with an S, how to use that. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and give it a try. Ready, set, pause. Welcome back. Let me show you how I approach this exercise. Let's take a look at the code real quick. Not a whole lot here. I mean, there's pretty con it's pretty concise here. Um, so what I have is I import JSON. I create a, a connection to the, the file, right? That's all the same as before. So here's the new stuff. On line six, I loop over the in file variable, which is holding the file connection. So I'm looking line by line one line at a time. And then I throw in that line into the json.loads with an S function right there on line seven. And that's a dictionary. And therefore I can get the value associated with the key text out of that dictionary by using square brackets right next to the variable name, holding the dictionary, right? So there's not a whole lot of code there. Let's see what happens when I run this. And we have tweets here. Um, I'm just pulling out the text, All right? Sorry, there's some swearing in here. This is actual real live data from Twitter. Um, so you can see that my, I anonymized all these. And so I have this person tweeted to a bunch of specific 
people with their handle and I just anonymize those. Um, so that's it. So again, the point here is that before we use the dot load function and it just brought everything into one dictionary and then we had to like drill down and get the list and then loop over that list and get into the nested dictionaries. Here, what we're doing is we're creating a connection and then we loop over that connection so that we're looking line by line. On each line, we throw that into its own dictionary with the dot, j, uh, the dot uh, loads function right there on line seven. So that tweet is a dictionary. If we want to be clear, just double check that that actually is a dictionary. If I wanted to, I could do print type tweet, rerun the whole script, keyword shortcut. Yeah, each of those is a dictionary. And then I'm drilling down into one of the keys of that dictionary, which is text. If you want, we can take a look at just the tweet. We run the whole script. So here is that dictionary, right? It says class dictionary, good. That's the whole dictionary there. One of the keys is text. And the value is the actual tweet that was written by a human. And then I print out just that, that text there. So back to pause the video and look at that. It's pretty simple code there, not, not much code there. Uh, but make sure you understand why we're looping over the file connection like that and why we're passing that in there. Okay. All righty. Well, that brings us to a conclusion of this lesson on parsing JSON data. At this point, you should be able to parse JSON formatted data. And that brings us to a conclusion of this video. If you have any questions, as always, I'm super happy to help. Just um, stop by my office hours or, or email me. All right. See you next time.